Stars This and Live, May 24th, 2024, just wrapped up. They had a Q&A with the Vehicle Gameplay team. And this will be your summary and recap of all the information. Here are the developers that were on today's panel. Hello, I'm Elliot Morby. I am the uh, lead mission designer on the mission design team. I make all those missions that work perfectly for you, all of you. <laughs> My name is Yogi. I'm a principal vehicle pro programmer, and I deal mostly with space combat and the flight experience. So I'm basically Richard Towler, and I'm, <clears throat> um, and I'm the lead designer on the vehicle experience um, side. So <clears throat> it's balance, um, it's gameplay with vehicles, and basically working with Yogi and anyone else involved with the you know, the kind of general vehicle experience to make the vehicle gameplay good in Star Citizen. I'm Torsten, I'm the systems designer, and I complain a lot. VIP Transport and Bounty Hunting 2.0 is currently not being worked on. Jared does go into a little bit more explanation about Bounty Hunting 2.0 and saying that essentially it's waiting on other features. Some of the features that Jared specifically mentions are restraints, quantum tracking, FPS and ship scanning, and other refactors that aren't in the game yet. Once those are in, then the development for Bounty Hunting version 2 will continue. Here we get a little more clarification about what the devs meant in an earlier Spectrum post where they had said that they were both happy and unhappy about how Master Modes are right now. To simply get Master Modes even into the game was a huge undertaking. There's over 140 some odd ships, there's features from Squadron 42 that they needed to implement, and they all had to make it for the 3.23 deadline. This meant that they had no time to do any of the balancing and tweaks that they would like to do per ship. So while they're unhappy that 3.23 didn't include a balancing pass, they are happy that they were able to meet the huge undertaking. They do want to stress, and this is going to be a theme throughout this SEL, that in regards to master modes, they are listening to the player's feedback, and that is one of the key things that they're looking into when addressing balancing. There's much more about engineering later on. They do confirm at this point that all of internal development is being forced to use the new resource refactor at this point, which is pretty exciting. While Jared does ask the question about refueling and rearming, the developers just simply say yes to refueling, but they discuss a little bit about restocking. They confirm that currently the way that you would restock, that you would buy ammunition containers that will refresh your pool. Or if you have a larger ship, like a capital ship, there are dedicated slots, at least for now, that you can move those ammunition containers to. Sooner or later, they are going to unify the ammunition. At this point, Jared does talk about how Tyler was going to release a Spectrum post regarding the changes to Retaliator and the Firebird. And since then, Tyler has released that, so I will put that up here now. We see that they're going to be doubling the Firebird's missile count from 12 to 24. The Firebird signature reduction has been corrected. It will be increased from 20% to 40%. All the Retaliator turns have been upgraded to size 3 laser repeaters. And all the Retaliator turns have had dead zone issues fixed. This is a fantastic change. However, please note that even though Tyler said that this is going to be coming in a 3.23.1a patch, Later on in the Spectrum post, John Crew does correct this and say that it's actually going to be fixed in the 3.23.2 patch, which could be an Evo Cotti as early as today, but CIG did mention that mid next week was most likely. The short answer to this question is yes, there will be missions for refueling in the future. The issue is that this isn't as straightforward as you might think. They have to try to account for all the different things that a player might do. If they try to refuel an NPC ship, what'll happen if the player decides to raid or pirate the NPC? There needs to be ramifications put into the game for all the different actions the player might do, and that is why it's gonna take longer to get missions like refueling in the game.
they do hope that the first version of mining missions will be coming soon. However, they will just be basic missions to start off. Like a facility might ask for X amount of Y material. You could either mine it or pirate it. The facility just really won't care where you get it from, as long as you get it. However, down the road, they will be making missions more specific. Like the facility might own a specific plot in an asteroid field and you would be required to go there to get the material. What they mean by robust is, will there be multiple levels to a mission? Like, will a mining mission turn into a repair mission as you progress through the contract? Overdrive was kind of a test bed for this, where there were different phases that all accumulated to one goal. The developers do want to have more robust missions in the future. They feel that they need to flesh out basic missions first. Once you get a good foundation, then they can use those as building blocks and move them into more robust missions. The developers are going to make the changes after 4.0 launches to where the power plants are going to consume fuel. Specifically, they're going to consume hydrogen. And if the fuel runs out, then the power plant shut down. That would mean no life support, no thrusters, etc, etc. They wanted to get this feature in for when 4.0 launched. There's too many other features they had to work on to get this slipped in for the actual launch. But with base building on the horizon, it is very important that the power plants do consume some kind of material. At this point, they came back to the topic of master modes to ask the big question, is balance even possible with all of the changes? The developers here seem pretty optimistic about the master modes altogether. They do admit that things aren't balanced right now, but they are getting a wealth of data with all the players. To me, it was interesting that the developers claim to have positive trends when it comes to flight in the game, especially when it comes to bounty hunting and ship to ship fighting. I know that most people and I'm included, are not too happy with the, with the place of combat at the moment in the game. But the devs do confirm that balance is going to be an ongoing thing for years to come as new ships are included, etc, etc. However, the developers do add a caveat here that balance does not mean that every ship can do the same thing as every other ship. There will always be some ships that are better at combat, maneuverability, defense over other ships. Distortion, EMP, and other things are still going to be here in the future for Star Citizen. Distortion will be able to be countered with the multi-tool, so you won't just be a sitting duck anymore. It will be some kind of draining feature. They also give us the hint that in 4.0, soft death is going to be changing as well. There's a little bit of what they're looking at in Arena Commander right now, but they didn't quite specify. They are still in active discussion as to exactly what it's going to be, but as an example, perhaps you can escape soft death by fixing the power plants. It is also here that they mention that the TTK, the time to kill, will be adjusted for all the ships in 4.0. There are plans to make the contract descriptions more clear. However, there's a grander vision when it comes to these contracts in general. In the future, they want to make it so that certain missions might actually change up where they're at. So let's say the mission giver tells you that the bounty you're after is in a ship. That is the information that the mission giver has. However, when you get into combat, perhaps the NPC will eventually land and make its way into a bunker for protection. Now it's turned into an FPS mission, something the mission giver would not have known. These are aspects that are still down the road, but on the minds of the mission content creators. Here we learn that previously the mission team was solely responsible for all the mission rewards. This is actually why we ended up getting a wipe for 3.23. They accidentally made the salvage missions pay out just way too well, and that was not intended from the get-go. Now the economic team is involved and are assisting the missions team with trying to figure out what are the right payouts for all these missions. It is now this dynamic duo of a team that decided to nerf Call to Arms. In a near future patch, Call to Arms is going to also be readjusted again. What that adjustment will be, we just don't know.
Here, I'm just gonna let Jared's own words explain it. Yes, the dupe bug is super duper annoying. Um, all I can tell you right now, because I'm sitting here live doing a show and I'm not plugged into everything else at the moment, is that we have a fix internally. It's working on internal builds uh, and that that fix will go out in a point patch. Uh, I don't know if it'll be 0.3 or it'll be a 0.2 B or whatever, like the, the, they're still working that out, how that's gonna be distributed. Uh, but we have a fix, uh, it's working internally and it will go out uh, as soon as everything aligns to allow it to work out. As far as anything else around that, uh, I know there's a bunch of subsequent questions. I don't have the answers for those ones. So hang tight, it's coming. There are too many people at CIG where racing is near and dear to their hearts. It is not going anywhere. However, they do confirm that Master Mode's kind of screwed racing up. There was already talks internally about changing the racing tracks so that it would accommodate Master Modes. Yogi and others have said not to do that yet as they still need to tweak master modes to see where they're going to end up landing for these ships. And they also discuss about opening up all the tracks so that we can go and race in them for practice. It'll give you the time, it'll give you the markers, everything like if you were racing for the mission properly. However, it just won't count until you have earned your way up and progressed through the racing contracts. Yogi also mentioned that someone asked him about adding smoke pods to racing, which has not been thought or discussed about within CIG yet, but Yogi loves the idea of having those smoke pods to deploy during a race. So it is something that we might see in the future. In regards to the tanks, it seems that another team had made a change to the back end that caught the vehicle team off guard. This caused the handling of tanks to just, well, tank. They do have a fix for the tank handling internally, but they did not give us a time for when that's going to be released. Now, as far as ground vehicles, there was an interesting discovery they found. Essentially, there's two different vehicles. There's a server side vehicle and the player side vehicle. And somehow the players were interacting with the server side vehicle and not the player side vehicle. Because of this, it caused a lot of issues, as you would imagine. They do have a fix for this internally, but yet again, we have no ETA for its release. It is going to be interesting to see how good ground vehicles improve once this fix is implemented. This was included in the live, so I will include it here. Jared Jer responds to this by saying, this isn't the UI team, this is the vehicle gameplay team. He did throw in that the UI team is currently addressing and meeting about clearing up the cluttered screens. The developers did confirm that there is something wrong with the grav lev, but they don't know what it was. Something seemingly changed on the back end, but they haven't been able to hone it down. The only things they have touched lately have been the handling, but that wouldn't have broken the grav lev in the way that it is now. They are actively hunting down to see where this problem is so that they can quash it. They also confirm here that they really want to kind of rework grav lev as it is because bug or not, it still doesn't handle the way that they imagine grav levs should handle, which is a lot better than it is now. The team is currently, the team is looking into ways to make ground vehicles more useful for the players in Star Citizen. There were artificial things that they had thought up of, like maybe the ground vehicles are the only things that could detect copions on radar, but in the end, they didn't like that. It didn't feel right. The distribution centers have seen an uptick on ground vehicles as the turrets don't target them, but they're also looking into more environmental reasons to use ground vehicles. Weather being one of them, maybe the winds are too high or in the future storms and things of the like, but other ways like maybe the forest is too thick to land your ship in and so you need a ground vehicle to drive through it. Something like that feels more natural and realistic, which then in turn improves our gameplay experience with the game. They also mentioned that in Pyro, there's gonna be other factors that they're gonna be able to include that would make ground vehicles more viable in the future as well. And then lastly, we finally return to engineering as they discuss about what to expect in 4.0. 
At this moment, there will be life support with the fire system. The life support can be used to counter fires as well. As with the room propagation, if, if you open up the door to the outside and you're in space, it will snuff out the fire. There's going to be life support maintenance to make sure you have enough breathable atmosphere. Filters will be introduced as a new consumable for the life support system. Uh, power management will be introduced, although it's not in Arena Commander as of yet. They're still working on the UI for power management as they want to make it as accessible in gameplay as possible. Relays and fuses are going to be introduced into more ships. And then on the design side, there's going to be a rebalancing of the items. So they are more meaningful for each ship. And the differences between the grades, whether they are civilian or military, and more actually make a difference. This will also include making things more clear on what those differences are and why you may want to choose one over another. At this point, batteries are not expected to make it for the initial 4.0 launch. There's just too much other gameplay and features that they're working on, and they want to make sure that what does get in the game is more polished. Internally, they're concerned about making engineering too difficult of a learning curve initially, so they want to ease us more into it anyways. They're introducing the repair of ship items, like in Arena Commander. You can exchange the fuses and broken items, and then as we discussed earlier, there's a counter to distortion with the multi-tool. At first, there's going to be three malfunctions that are included with the launch of engineering. Fire damage, item damage, and distortion damage. All three of these have a way for the player to counter the negatives. That's why they're being included right away. However, there are more bespoke malfunctions that will be coming in the future. Whew, okay, that brings us finally to the end of this recap. This was kind of a long one. <laughs> I'm going to leave you there for now. We got Invictus going on and the last weekend of Overdrive. So get in there and knock it out if you haven't done it yet. I'll see you in the next video. And for now, bye bye